Hello guys, I'm Rebel and welcome back to Anybody Can Code Python series. So today we'll be discussing more about functions. We'll be covering up topics like types of arguments and how they can be used in our programs. As you all know, in Python, a function may or may not be defined with parameters. So in those functions that are defined with parameters, those parameters must be supplied with the required arguments. In Python, there are different types of arguments, such as the positional argument, the keyword argument and the default argument. Firstly, positional arguments. Well, as the name suggests, the arguments are passed to the parameters according to their position. Like the first argument gets assigned to the first parameter, the second argument gets assigned to the second parameter and it goes on like that. For example, let's create a function named student to display the student details like the roll number, name and percent. Roll number percentage. Now let's call this function from the main function student and pass some values roll number let it be 21 give some name I'll give three percentage 78 so now let's run this So the arguments have been passed correctly and it has been placed in the correct positions. Now let's uh, call this function again and give some other values replacing the positions. Let me give name in the place of uh, roll number ABC. Now let's run this. Let me give uh, a new line. Since we have passed the arguments in the wrong order, we ended up with an output like this. So this confusion can be overcome by using the keyword arguments. So now let's see how to implement that. So here you only have to mention the keywords that you have used in the function definition. So here uh, ABC is the name. So here uh, name is the keyword that we have mentioned in the function definition. So let's use that name is equal to ABC. And uh, let's consider 34 as the roll number. Roll is equal to 34. And then finally we have the percent keyword so let's run this and check as you can see the arguments have been assigned correctly to the parameters by using the keyword arguments now let's add few more students student 22 Now imagine that these five students belong to the same class, say class C. 
Suppose if you want to display the class of every student, one way you can do that is by passing the class argument at each function call. So something like this, comma c, comma c, comma c. And you have to do the same for all the students. But this seems really inefficient. So this can be solved by using default arguments. Now, let's create a new parameter named class1 is equal to c. So, this is called as a default parameter. So, you have to display it. Print class1. Class Let's run this. As you can see, the default arguments has reduced the work of repeating the arguments several times. Now suppose, if you would like to change the class of this student to D, so in that case, default arguments can be overwritten. So, Let's change the student class to D, comma, D. Let's run this. As you can see, the class of that student alone has been changed to D. So that's how you can play with arguments in Python. And guys, in case if you're not sure of how many arguments to pass, then there are variable length arguments where you can use both positional as well as keyword arguments. So now let's create a function. To simply display the arguments that are passed to it. Print. So in Python, a variable length argument may be defined by prefixing the argument with a star like this. So that the compiler understands that it's a variable length positional argument. Now, you can pass how many of our arguments as you want. Samsung. So now let's print this. As you can see, on using variable and positional arguments, the arguments have been evaluated in the form of tuples. Now let's see how to implement variable and keyword arguments. So it can be implemented by adding a star here. And then you have to add keywords to it. So let this be brand. And let this be model. And let this be price. Let's run this. So here, variable and keyword arguments are evaluated as dictionaries, where brand, model, and price are all keys, and Samson, A50, 15,000 are all values added to it. And one more thing to note here is that the variables that are declared inside a function cannot be accessed from outside. Let's now declare it anyways. Let's declare a variable id1 is equal to 12 and then access it outside the function print id1. Now let's run this. So it says name error, name id1 is not defined. That is because they are local variables. 
which means the scope of the variable is limited to only that function and they cannot be accessed or used outside the function. Suppose if you want to access the local variable, then you have to make it a global variable. So let's see how to do it. So here you have to declare this ID as global ID 1. So now let's run this and check. So that's how global variables work in Python. And finally, we have nested functions, which are nothing but one function enclosed within another. The concept of nested functions can be best understood when we learn about closures. So we will be learning about it in one of the later tutorials. Until then, stay tuned and see you all in the next. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe.